the word of God. Amen. God, we thank you, Father, for you are worthy of all praise. We're grateful today to know that you are a God that, that looks where we are. You see us. You're concerned about us. And so, Father, we come in the name of Jesus and ask you to open up our ears so that we can hear. We're praying, Lord God, that we will receive the word from you today. Father, let it not fall on deaf ears. Uh, Father, we ask that you would open up our understanding that it is plain and simple and clear what it is that you're calling for us to do. Father, we're asking you to give us what we need so that we can be the people you've called us to be. Yes, Equip us, strengthen us, help us to move out and be all that you've called us to be. Now, Father, we say thank you. We give you the honor and the praise for it all. When it's all said and done, you're going to glorify yourself in this house today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Now, let me just give you a little bit of setup as I go before I go into what I want to, to discuss with you. First, one of the meanings, uh, one of the meanings of focus is to pay peculiar or close attention to something. Yes. So we, we have entered into this ninth month. This is the month of September. But the number nine is also significant in the Bible. And it, it, it signifies divine completeness or it convey, conveys the meaning of finality. So Jesus Christ, on the, at the ninth hour of the day, he made way for us to be saved. He opened up salvations to everyone. He took the steps to completely deal with sin. Thank you, Jesus. And to give you and I what we couldn't change, but he could bring finality to. And that's the sin in our lives. Now it also represents the fruit of the Spirit in which our faithfulness, gentleness, Goodness, um, joy, kindness, long-suffering, love, peace, and self-control. You can find that in Galatians 2, uh, 5, 22 to 23. So Christ's complete work was to save us, but then to set us apart for the good work that God desires to do in our lives. So that, this, so that we can be good fruit carriers and that the, we carry in the right kind of fruit. And so today as we've been talking about focus, paying close attention to something, throughout the day we've been, as I said, we've been talking about it. And so we're going to walk through these 21 days. For those that you don't know, we started a 21 day fast on September 1st. And the reason why we call this fast is because we said to ourselves, I know I did. I said, you know what Lord, I desire more of you. I desire a closer walk with you. I desire for you to pull back the veil over my eyes for some things that are hidden from me. So we're asking the Lord for some clarity and to help us to come away from this 21 days more focused on him than we ever have been to be able to see a greater a, a manifestation of his power because I don't want to see some healings every now and then. Every time somebody come up to be healed in the, healed in the name of Jesus, I want them to be healed. I don't want to see deliverances every now and then. Every time somebody come and need deliverance, I want to see deliverance. And that means I'm willing to fast and to pray to see that happen. So we want to come away with having focused on the things that are necessary for us to see the God do some things in our lives. Does that mean it's a release? He got to release us from some things, but he want to release some things into us. And so I want us to take for just a little while, a little brief Sunday school lesson, if you will, on what things I think God wants us to focus on. Amen? Amen. So my first scripture is James, and you're going to see it on the, on the monitor, James 1, verse 23 to 25, and I'm reading from the Amplified. And this is what this scripture says. For if anyone, who, if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it, he is like a man who looks carefully at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he immediately forgets what he looked like. But he who looks carefully into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and faithfully abides by it, not having become a careless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys, he will be blessed and favored by God in what he does in, in his life of obedience. Amen. The first point I want to make today is we got to be active doers. Active doers. The key is you. we can't be active doers if we are not attentive to what God says do. If we're not attentive to his word. If we're not attentive to listening and hearing what the spirit is speaking. The word calls us to, the word says we, we're not to be careless listeners. Now what is a careless listener? That's someone who hears the truth but refuse to apply it to themselves. Or 
Or it's a person that hears the truth, but too busy trying to see how that apply to you, Marcy, that apply to Sonia, that apply to you and you, whatever, not saying, but Lord, speak to me. Amen. That's a careless list. I'm listening for everybody else but for myself. God says we have to be attentive to hear and let the word then take inventory on our hearts and on our conditions. And if we want God to release us from some issues, some conditions, some fears, some doubts, whatever it is, then we're going to have to do and we're going to have to have, make a stand of staring in the mirror to really see what needs to be changed. Amen. And we have to stop being careless with the things of the spirit. Too often we take this quick glance of the word. You know how people do. They want to prove a point so they're looking the Bible to find the answer and then they're good to go. But God is saying, no, 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 no. I need you to wait. God is saying, hold on, wait. Stand in the mirror. Reflect on the glow of the word and really see what I want you to see. And as the word lights and illuminates your heart, then he says, focus to see and to understand. Because if you look long enough, what you'll start to see is maybe there's some bitterness there. Or maybe he wants you to focus long enough to see that you're running from accountability. Or maybe he wants you to focus enough to see that your emotional needs are determining what you do and how you do it. Maybe you stood long enough, glad long enough in the word, you will begin to see, oh, there's more to it than I even thought. Amen. Then after God says you do that, once you see, now he said, what you going to do with it? Mm. What are you going to do with what I've seen and shown you? And I like how the Amplified says, be an active doer. We do, because we can, because meaning, if he's saying be an active doer, that means you can do without being active. You could be unresponsive, you could be passive, you can just kind of hear and it just go right on over your head. You don't care, you don't seek to look deeper. But he said, that's not what I want you to do. I want you to be aggressive. I want you to be determined, unwilling to relent, unwilling to give up. Get the laser focus on what you hear God telling you and get a laser focus on doing it so that you can see the manifestation of the blessings that you want in your life. Amen. And that sometimes calls for, we might have to be isolated. True. That means we might have to step away from the noise, the distraction, the people, the stuff. Sometimes we got to find a place to be quiet. Because I can't hear, if everybody started talking right now and somebody was whispering over here, I can't hear the whisper, but I can hear all y'all. So what do I got to do? I got to one by one. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. So you got to come start speaking to some stuff in your life. Shut up, poverty. Shut up, lies. Shut up, lack. Shut up, sickness. Shut up, uh, inability to think that I can do. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Yes, that made me feel good. And when you tell all that stuff to shut up, guess what? Then you can hear God speak. Amen. You can focus in on what he wants you to do. That's how you become an active listener, an active doer. Because then you start to discern what voice is speaking to you. You start to discern what is talking to you. Because the stuff always talking to you. Let me tell y'all something. I'm going to give you this for free. Do you know every thought you have, you do not have to take ownership of it. Just because you have a thought, don't mean it's your thought. The devil will come tell you, you ain't good for nothing. You better say, devil, step up back out for me. I'm not going to receive that. Because God has already told me that I am more than enough. I am more than a conqueror. I can be an overcomer and I don't have to go by way of the of the of the what the, the enemy says that I do. So we gotta start take stop taking and making a lab at us everything the devil says. Amen. He tell you you one thing you say no nah, devil shut up. I'm fleeing for you I'm resisting it because that's not the truth. But that's how you become an attentive and active doer. Thank you Jesus so we want to see the completion of the thing God wants in our life. We have to stay focused and then do with what he tells us to do. So what we got to be? Focus. Focus. And then what's that first part? How do we become focused? We be what? An active doer. We got to do. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 2, verses 1 and 2, and then I'm going to read verses 8 and through 10. And again, this is the Amplified, and it will be on the screen. And you, he made alive when you were spiritually dead and separated from him because of your transgressions and sins in which you once walked. You will follow the ways of this world, influenced by this present age, in accordance with the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit who is now at work in the disobedient, the unbelieving, who fight against the purpose of God. Then the verse 8, for it by grace, let me say that again, for it is by grace God's remarkable compassion and favor drawing you to Christ. 
that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, not through your own efforts, but it is undeserved, gracious gift of God, not as a result of your works, not your attempts to keep the law, so that you, no one, will be able to boast or take credit in anyone for this, for this salvation. For we are all his workmanship, his own work, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us before time, taking paths which he set, so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. Thank you, Jesus. The second point I want to make is we have to live according to the one that redeemed us. Amen. As I mentioned in the first point was what? God wants us to closely examine ourselves. And when we do that, we uncover the truth about who we are. And once we uncover this truth, we, we realize we have nothing to brag about. Because you and I did nothing to save ourselves. In fact, the scripture tells us we were dead and separated from God. We were all workers of sin. And so we got this thing, though. We try to compare sin. Your sin is worse than my sin. So we, we got this, this level of, of sinfulness. But I just want to tell you, sin is sin before God. And, 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 and it's not like because my sin is greater than your sin or your sin is greater than mine, that somebody going to get a less hot seat in hell. It ain't, that ain't that's not what's happening. It ain't no, you at one level hot and you at ten level hot. Hell is hell and you don't want to go there. Amen? Amen. And so when, we, when we're when sinners, this living outside of salvation, it says we were of the devil. He was the one, he was our father in a sense. He was the one ruling in our lives. And the scripture says we were fighting against the purpose of God. Think about that. What God wants to do in your life when you align yourself up with the devil, you fighting against your own purpose. You fighting against what God says he wants to do in you. But the grace of God, thank you Jesus. This undeserved compassion and kindness toward us drew us to God through Jesus Christ. Through salvation. And God did that. What he did for us is he removed from us then all of the things that would keep us in bondage. We're transformed. Our mind is renewed. We put on the mind of Christ. We can walk in the newness. We can be everything God has called us to be. Now this is the point I want us to get out of this. Is this. If God has saved you. He's given you this opportunity to walk in purpose and on purpose. Why do we keep trying to do things our own way? Amen. Why do we keep trying to do it our own way? We are called to live according to the one that created the path. It said in the scripture, what? Taking paths which he set. He knew the path that he wanted us. Amen. But too many of us are trying to do it ourselves. Amen. And when we try to do it ourselves, we actually, whether we realize or not, we're trying to take credit for our own salvation. We're trying to take credit for us doing it right. We're trying to take credit for, well, you know, I'm a good person. And you hear people say, well, I'm a good person. That's trying to take credit. But can I tell you, your credit, don't, you ain't, it don't add up. It's just, you're going to go what you think is a credit on your life. You're going to go and find it's a deficit. And your account will have a negative, And you can't get nowhere with a negative in your account. And so how are we doing this? By trying to fix your own stuff. I believe that's why some people backslide. I think that's some reason why some people can't stay with the Lord. We automatically just say, you know, we have this theory. Well, they just didn't want to love the Lord. They really didn't love. No, I think sometimes either because people have done it or they have done it to themselves. They've taken on this attitude that I have to be perfect. And so I'm going to do all of this work so that I can earn God's love and then I can be perfect. Well, that's not how that works. God loves you, period. God loves you, period. God loves you, period. You, God loves you while you were still a sinner. He loved you when you was jacked up. He loved you when you wasn't doing right. So you can't ever get, you can't earn what his love is. You can't do that. And so what I'm trying to get you to understand is you are accepted by Christ. Amen. Not because of your works, because you can't, because you're not perfect. 
Not because you have the right amount of money, not because you, um, you know, go to the right church, not because you wear the right clothes, not because you got the right job, you know, the right people. None of that is why you accept it. You simply accept it because, of, as the word said, for God so loved that he gave. One thing we have to understand is God's love gives to us. What he gives to us is his son because he knew that I couldn't save myself and you couldn't save yourself. So he sent his son to stand in what we will couldn't do. He, we couldn't do it. And what he does is he gives us not only salvation, but he gives us everything we need to take us and snatch us out of the grip of the devil. Amen. And after you come and receive this salvation and this gift, then he wants you to then line yourself up and live accordingly. But you can't do it in reverse. Right, right. Too often we're trying to do first and then receive, and that's not how it works. We have to receive and then from the receiving we do. See, we again let me say that. See, we try to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the word. I'm going to fast 90 days. I'm going to, you know, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna be nice and me, 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 me. And we do all of this to say, God loves me. And then we wonder why we feel broken and out of sync. Because God said, You trying to do it yourself. He said, that's not how it works. Come and accept my love. Accept me. Accept who I am. Then let me rise up in you. Because when I rise up in you, then you can say, I will do. You do from what he's given you, not do to try to get. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's a good one right there. We can't do it in reverse. And so we got to live according to the one that redeemed us. And, the, and, to, and that really means to live according to the one that redeems us means I got to follow his instruction. I can't live according to him if I'm doing my own thing. If I got my own instructions. If I'm figuring my own path. That's not following him. Following him says, you died for me. What do you want me to do? And he says, come and receive me. All right, I receive you. Now what you want to do? He said, now let go of your life. You're not in control no more. Let me take over. And then focus on what I show you to do. Focus on the things that I tell you that need to be cleaned up. Focus on the things that I show you that need to be changed. Because if I'm telling you to focus on you, I'm going to give you the strength to change it. But if you don't focus on what I tell you to focus on, then you're going to be all out here in the, in the atmosphere somewhere, totally jacked up and wondering why things ain't going right. Amen. He said, keep your focus on me. And then I will teach you how to live according to my way. Amen. Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 7. Now I'm reading a large piece of scriptures and I don't apologize for it because the word is all good by itself. Amen. Amen. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by, su a by so great a cloud of witnesses who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us, let us run with endurance and active persistent the race that is set before us. Looking away from all that will distract us and focus our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of faith, the first incentive for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarded the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and his complete completion of his word. Just consider and meditate on him, who endured for sinners such bitter hostility against himself. Consider it all in comparison to with your trials, so that you would not grow weary and lose heart. You have not yet struggled to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin. And you have forgotten the divine words of encouragement which is addressed to you as sons. My sons, do not make light of the discipline of the Lord and do not lose heart and give up when you are corrected by him. For the Lord disciplines and corrects those whom he loves. And he punishes every son whom he receives and welcomes to his heart. You must submit to correction for the purpose of discipline. God is dealing with you as sons for, for what son is there whom his father does not discipline. Thank you, Jesus. That was a long piece of scripture. I'm going to have some fun with this one. The next point is receive the father's correction. Receive the father's correction. We are told to live by God with a persistent 
focus on this race ahead. And this race really is life. You are in a race for your life. We oftentimes think and look at life like it's, we're going to live forever. I'm going to be a thousand years old. We, that's how we deal with life. But you are not guaranteed how long your life will be. But you have to look at it as I've been called to a race that I am determined that I am going to win. I'm not going to let disappointment, I'm not going to let nothing stop me from being able to run the race the way that God has called me to be. So I'm not going to get faint. I'm not going to let setback, upset, disappointment, rejection, bitter, hostility. I'm not going to let any of that skip me off course. And I love what the scripture tells us. It says, now meditate on this. What are we meditating on? Meditate on this truth. Um, none of us have had to struggle to the point of shedding our blood for sin. I was not crucified for you. I love you much, but I did not stretch my hands wide for you, for, 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 for you to be saved. And even if I was asked to die, guess what? My dying would have just been in vain because I can't forgive sins with my death. It was only Christ that could do that. And so we have to look and say, well, wait a minute. If my suffering, it, in comparison to what, what Christ has done, it's nothing. So God is saying, I need y'all, my children, to stop being rebellious. I need you to stop having these temper tantrums. I need you to stop just acting like an infant when stuff don't go your way. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just, I ain't going to look at nobody. I will raise my own hand. You know how we do. I, I, I was funny. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be real transparent. I remember one time I was going through something. I started talking King James. Oh my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I mean, I was, I mean, I really went King James version in my, you know, Lord, where art thou? And you know, and I guess he said, What is wrong with you? He and you know what? And I didn't even know the scripture at the time, but the Holy Ghost began to tell me, lift up your heads, oh ye gay, be you doors you ever lifted up, and let the king of glory come in. I was like, okay, I know that's Bible, but where is that at? He said, go look it up and read the whole thing. In other words, he was like, uh, I'm not going to get into your pity party. You better lift up your head. You better acknowledge who I am. Who do you belong to? If you know who you belong to, you have to deal with the correction. You have to deal with stuff. And I want to use correction a little broad here. Sometimes correction isn't just that you've done something wrong. Sometimes it's just that God is correcting the, the path that you're going on. So we, we often think, if God is correcting something, I mean, I've done something wrong. So then that's where the devil starts saying, well, you know, God don't love you no more. And we start, yeah, well, God... You must not love me. Why am I going through the... No, no. He's correcting the path you was on. Not necessarily correcting the sin. Thank you, Jesus. That's two things. Sometimes he's going to correct your sin because you were just hard-headed and rebellious. So, yes, he does that. But sometimes you could be loving him, doing what he tells you, and he's still correcting you. You're going, wait a minute, something's wrong with that. That's the jacked up. No, because he says, I understood your heart, but your mind and your soul, your soul is realms was taking you off course. And because I loved you, I got to put you on back on point. I got to put you back. So he says we need to submit because if we don't, if we're unwilling to change, if we're unwilling to submit, scripture says influenced by this present age, in accordance with the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit who is now at work in the disobedient, the unbelieving who fight against the power of God. My question is why would you be saved and go back and allow the devil to influence you? Why would you allow him to fight against your purpose? I mean, I'm like, I have read this scripture, but in the Amplified, that one just said, whoa to me. That said, wait, 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 hold on. So every time, God, when you tell me, Jewel, you got to forgive that person, and I go, no, I am not doing that because I have a right. They made, they did this to me, and, and I'm just not going to forgive them. I say I forgive, but I'm going to hold it in my heart. Every time I do that. You know what the Lord said? You have just allowed yourself to be influenced by this present age. You've allowed yourself to align with the prince of the power, which is Satan. And now you are working in disobedience and you have aligned yourself with a deceiver so that he can deceive you and take you off your purpose. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be off my purpose. I want to live on purpose, with purpose, and in the purpose that God has for me. I got a little I want to live like God said live. I want to do like God said live, do. I don't want to make make myself set myself up for no discouragement. Amen. And so when we refuse, that's what we do. And we're told to strip off every 
every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us. Do you know when we find ourselves in these spiritual bondages, in these spiritual places, it's because the enemy of our soul, he ain't dumb. He ain't as dumb as people think. The devil ain't really dumb. I mean, he's been here forever, just about. He's been here for a long time. So he knows human tendencies. He knows the human heart. So he knows how he can come in and try to trick you. And so he wants to entice you into doing those things which take you away. To keep you from being ill to who God wants you to be. So he, God says, take them off. Take them off. Take them off. Let him give you the power. And I, I can almost hear, but well, Lord, that's too hard. Because that's our excuse. Lord, I can't change because that's too hard. Is anything impossible for God? No. Now, if you belong to him, if his spirit is in you and dwells within you, then we really have no excuse whatsoever. We can never say that's too hard. Yes, it's too hard for me and myself. I'll acknowledge that. But I'm not doing it in myself. That's why I'm following the one who redeemed me. Because he will do the work, but he will empower me to be able to do it. Amen? Amen. So we got to be able to receive the Father's correction. That's correction from our foolishness and our sin, but that's the correction when we our path is going off and God says, I need to put you back in the right place. That was good. I love that one. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Philippians 2.12. This is a shorter verse. Philippians 2.12. So then, my dear ones, just as you have always obeyed my instruction with enthusiasm, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation. That is, cultivate it, bring it to full effect, actively pursue spiritual maturity with awe-inspired fear and trembling, using serious caution and critical self-evaluation to avoid anything that might offend God or discredit the name of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. The point I want to make here is focus on pursuing spiritual maturity. Focus on pursuing spiritual maturity. Paul gives us this admonishment. He tells the believer that we need to continue to work out our salvation. Now, too often, we have read this to mean work to be saved. That's not what this scripture says. This scripture does not say work to be saved. That's inaccurate. We can't work to be saved. It's by grace through faith. We already read that. So that no man can do what? We can't both. So it's not, it's, not, it's not saying work to be saved. Work out your salvation is the same thing as, for example, working out your body to get in shape. You didn't create this body. But you've been given stewardship over this body. And in that stewardship, guess what you got to do? If you're going to work out, you got to get up every day. You got to go to the gym to work out. You have to eat right. You have to make sure that you're putting in them gym's hour. Because guess what? If you don't change everything, you would have just been wasting your time. You've just been going to the gym. Because I knew a, a lady like that. I used to go to the gym, and I was like, man, this lady working hard. And, I, and after a year, I'm like, but she ain't losing no weight. Why is she not losing? And then I happened to be in all these, and I saw her cart. She had all kind of honey buns and candy and Twizzlers. I don't think I saw not a piece of green vegetable nowhere in the cart. So you can't do half. You got to do it all. And so we have to, so what happens is you, you start to know what you're pursuing. If, you, if you're pursuing that, you know what to pursue. And so you know what you need to do. And some of it is hard at first, but after a while, guess what? You line yourself up to do the things you need to do. It's the same thing with working out your salvation. You didn't birth this new life in you, but you and I have been given stewardship over it. And after we receive the, the, the gift of God, salvation, now God says cultivate it in you. That means we got to dis discipline ourselves. We got to pursue the things that will mature us spiritually. spiritually. And guess what? That means we got to focus. We have to focus. That means we have to be an active doer. It's just like it unto a person that, as I said, you know, you want to get in better health. You want to go after a lifestyle for support. They don't, guess what they do? They don't live off fast food. They don't live off the restaurant. I ain't going to look at nobody because I want nobody to think I'm talking to them. You have to understand that spiritual walk. You can't do, this ain't a quick fix. It's a lifestyle change. You don't expect to go to the gym for 10 seconds and then see no results. So why do you expect to read the Bible for 10 seconds and then that really make a difference? Right. 
You must be willing to pour over the word so it can make a difference in you. And see, I'm just using the weight thing because I'm just, you know, be transparent. I, I when in, what was it, 2013, I was sick. I was on four, well, three blood pressure medicines. My doctor was going to put me on another one. I was losing my eyesight. Y'all, many of y'all heard the story, but I got to tell it again anyway. I, I, was, about to, I was losing my eyesight because my pressure was so high. And I was just sick. I was sick more than I was well. And I remember telling the Lord, Lord, you know, oh, Jesus, I'm your child. Heal me. You know, I was laying hands on myself. I was about to slay my own self in the spirit. And the Lord was like, uh, Jewel, yeah, you got to change. And I was like, what, what, what? Change what? He said, Jewel, you have to do what I tell you to do. I have to follow the Redeemer. He said, you have to follow my instructions. And I was like, well, Lord, you got it. You could just heal me instantly. You know, I'm, I'm like, let's go straight in. Just heal it. Take me off the medicine. Wow, I'm good. He told me this. He said, but what would have changed in you? You still will be um, undisciplined. Mm -hmm. He said, you won't. You, he said, no, I can't because then you'll keep doing the same thing. And he showed me a picture of myself. Now, I'm going to just tell you, I love Twizzlers. He showed me with the whole big, not the little pack. You know, that big hefty pack. He showed me with that whole pack. With my hand like this, asking him to heal me. He said, Jewel, you got to let go of this stuff here if you want the healing here. Amen. And so I kept making excuses. I was like, well, he said, well, you know, Jewel. I said, okay, Lord, but well, what else? Exercise. He told me exercise. Let me tell you why I didn't want to exercise. Because at the time I had a perm. I was like, well, you know, we black. Black girls, you sweat your perm out. You know, you don't want to sweat your perm out. So, Lord, I can't do no exercise. I'm, I'm black. We, ooh, we don't want no water in our hair. He said, well, go natural. I start, yeah, that I'm going to you know, start rebuilding it. Oh, that can't be God. He said, go natural. And I was like, okay, look. So every excuse that I tried to give, he came up with something else. <laughs> then he told me, he said, okay. I said, well, Lord, well, how do I eat it? What do I do? And so he began to show me how to eat. And he told me to start juicing. First time I juiced, I drank that stuff. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's gross. This is what he told me. He said, what I say is good. You don't say it's bad. He said, but what I say is bad, you, you line yourself up. If I say it's good, it's good. If I say it's bad, it's bad. He said, so you change your life. And I started, he told me, I'm trying to make you an iron. See, there was a deeper person. It was deeper purpose. It was more than me just losing 50 pounds. It was more than me just getting off the um, high blood pressure. God had a purpose that he had for me right now. See, if I didn't need to be in this place, praying and laying hands on folk, and if I was up here, <laughs> My feet hurt and I couldn't do nothing. Why? Because my body was not ready to be in place and in purpose for what God wanted. Amen. And so I just want to tell somebody that you got to be an active doer. What God has told you to do, do it. Because it's not for just right now. What he wants to do is for where your future. What he wants to do is for where he's taking you. But what he's doing is because he wants greater for you. So let him do the hard work and you don't whine about it. Amen. Don't complain about it. Stop being a baby about I'm telling you the same thing he told me. Stop being a baby about Because the Lord has to show me, Jewel, is deeper. See, because when you let him take you deeper and receive his correction, he had to tell me, Jewel, this is more than weight. You holding on to bitterness because of all of the stuff that's been done in your life. And because of how you was abused and how you was thrown to the side, how you was raped, all of that stuff has added up in this 50 pounds. He said, see, because you were, when you would get disappointed and hopeless, the bitterness would rise up and you needed sweets to try to make it feel better. See, I had found a false God in my sweets and God had to show me, no, them Twizzlers, them cakes, that candy would never feel what only I can feel. Oh, I can feel the hopeless. And when I lost that 50 pounds, I'm going to tell you what he gave me a vision of. He showed me myself. I saw a little girl in a big old shirt, like a little girl playing in her daddy's shirt. He said, tell her bye-bye. I said, who is that? He said, that's the little girl in you that's been hurt. You've been carrying her all these years. That 50 pounds, you told her bye-bye. I told her bye-bye, and I've been free ever since. So thank you, Jesus. And so I just want to tell you sometimes, be an active doer, because you don't even understand the depths of what God is trying to do in your life. You don't even understand it. I didn't have a clue when I got started what he really was going after. I just thought I was going to be cute because I can get in the size six. That ain't what he was going after. He didn't want me broken anymore. He didn't 
want me depending on foster. He didn't want me sick. He wanted me healthy and well. And see, I come off of three of those medicines. I only got one more. I'm coming off of that one too. My eyesight has changed. I don't have that popping in my eyes where I can't see. And I was scared to tell folks because I was like, I'm going blind and I ain't, I don't want to say it from my mouth. But the Lord done turned all of that around. In fact, when I go see my doctor, she said, you look younger every time I see you. I said, that's Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because she said, you're 55. I said, that's right. And I know I don't look. Thank you, Jesus. So we have to be willing to live according to the redeemed one. That's our focus. God, I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how difficult it is. But I'm going I'm to I'm live according to you. Because just like I use the example of the weight person. If you, go, if you know you need help, what you do? You go to Jenny Craig, and Weight Watchers, you go to the gym, you get a trainer. And guess what? If they tell you, um, Jewel, you can't eat all of that. You're going to have to watch your portions. You ain't going to go somewhere, oh, I'm so depressed now. <sighs> they told me to watch my portions. You'll be like, what? Thank you. Because you've been this way. You've created this path. You've walked with more than one person already. So you understand some of the pitfalls that I might come up against. So I'm going to listen to you and I'm going to let you help me. So I'm going to follow you. It's the same way with Jesus Christ. He already created the path. He already know every temptation. He already know every obstacle. He already know everything that you're going to face. And he's already said, just follow me. And when you follow me, I promise you, you won't get to where you need to go. He said, but you got to stop whining. Don't be like pushback. Stop the pushback. I hear the Lord say, stop the pushback. Stop trying to sit down and negotiate with him on what the way you're supposed to go. How foolish can we be? Would you sit down with your trainer and they told you, I need you to lift a little more weight because I'm trying to build your muscle. You'd be like, no, I think I should go to one pound weight. I don't, I don't really want to do five because they just strain me too much. Your trainer going to say, who the trainer here? Are you the trainer or I'm the trainer? And you're going to say, well, you the trainer. Then they're going to say, well, then just be quiet and either you do what I want you to do or I can't train you. A trainer ain't going to beg you. They're going to say, I can't train you. You got to do it my way. Well, that's what Jesus is saying. I don't negotiate with you. If I told you to pick up that 10-pound weight, pick it up. It may be it's straining you. Guess what? I know it's straining you because it's trying to build your little fragile empathy uh, 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 muscles. I'm trying to get them bigger because you ain't been using them. He's trying to build us spiritually so we can have some strength and able to stand when the devil comes our way. When the devil comes our way. And he tells us, just receive it. Receive it. Receive the Father's correction. Receive what he has for you. Why you receive it? Because I already know what's going to be best for you. I already know what's going to work for you. And you would be surprised some of the things God teaches you. I remember a while back, we were in a, in a worse financial situation than we are now, like if that could be. But we were in a place financially. We used to have no money. All my kids was at home. You know, I didn't work. My husband worked. And we just didn't have enough money. We didn't have money to buy food. And I was just like, Lord, give us more money. Give us more money. You know, give us more money. Give us more money. Give us more money. But Lord, give us more money. He's like, nope. Lord, well, how am I supposed to be? He said, let me teach you. He said, I can teach you how to use what you already have. And he even taught me how to be like the, the with the five loaves and the fish. He taught me that. He taught me how to coupon. And then he told me to journal what I did. So one year I started to journal. I ended up with $10,000 worth of surplus in my house. I didn't pay no $10,000 for it. And I was able to do this on the money that before I couldn't even afford to just eat off of. So not only was it the same money, so it wasn't an increase in what I was spending. In fact, sometimes it was less. So the same money, not only was I able to eat off of it, but now I had a $10,000 surplus. And it is now, I don't know, three years later, and I still have some of that surplus in my house. And I'm like, well, what was that for? But you know what? We use it here now. See, I didn't know God was using, wanted me to use that here because I use that now. We use that. That's how we supply our little, our little pantry, so to speak, so that we can help people. So you don't always know, sometimes the, the, the things that you are coming up against, they feel hard, they difficult, they make you want to quit. Maybe they ain't like, maybe you're a little stronger than me. I want to lay on the floor and have a tantrum and hold
hold my breath. And you know, I'm just saying, I'm going to be real with you. I'll be like, Lord, this, this is not fair. And now he just like, okay, do you finish? All right, shake yourself up and get up and do this. Because guess what I learned? We can't make God move no faster than God wants to move. We can't make him do what he don't want us to, want to do neither. And then sometimes, even if he want to do it, he still ain't going to do it in your time. He's going to do it in his own. Because there's something he's working out in you. There's something he's doing in you. He's saying to us today, children, I need you to stay focused. Stay focused on who I am. Stay focused on what I'm doing. Stay focused, stay focused, stay focused. Because if you stay focused, what he's going to do is he's going to grow us up. There's some, there's some next that we got to get ready for. There's some next. There, see, we live life in the now. But God is saying, I need you to have a spiritual focus and see the future. You can't just see the now, because the now can disappoint you. The now can discourage you. He said, but I need you to see your future state. But you can't see your future state unless you come in and talk to him and ask him. And when he show you his future state, he wants to show us that you a crybaby right now, but it's coming a day you ain't going to be a crybaby. You, you wait, you, you, you're waiting for somebody else to help you, but it's coming a day you're going to be helping somebody else. Today you destitute and you don't see where things are going to get better. But your future, you will be having, you will have many, you will, I will put much into your hands. Why? Because you learned how to be faithful in the waiting and the getting here. So God is saying to us, we got to stop just standing in now. We got to see our future. But our focus has to be on him because he's the way that we get there. Because you and I don't get to our future in our own ability, and our own power. We don't get there. We don't get there. And we can't ever get there in our own ability. So I just give you this word as, as I, 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 we prepare to stand. The word that I give you from the Lord is this. God wants you to know he has a great plan for your life. The things that he desires for you are far greater than you could ever imagine or think. You couldn't even, you can't even, you can't even put in your mind the things that God has for you. And the devil of your soul right now wants you to stay with the focus on your now, with the focus on your lack, on the focus what you don't have, on the focus on you can't do. He wants your focus to be discard, I mean to be off. But I hear the Lord say, focus on me. And if you have spiritual cataracts where you can't see because your vision is, is shouts or cloudy, he said, I can surgically remove everything that hinders and stands in the way. And so today I'm calling us to come forth for prayer. And I'm asking you to do something. I'm asking you to make a declaration to yourself that, Lord, I'm going to focus on you. Today I'm making a decision. I'm not letting people kids, lack of money, my body, my, my tiredness, I'm not letting nothing stand in the way of me pursuing with, with diligence, hard-heartedly, hard I mean strongly, nothing is going to stand in the way anymore of me running after you. I today declare that I'm becoming, I get a double soul, a God chaser. I'm going to chase you. I'm going to seek you. I'm running with my whole heart. I don't even understand now what that means. It's kind of scary. Because I know that that means to race after you and to chase after you. The, 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 the line gets smaller and smaller. It's not a lot that I can take you to that place. But I don't care. Today I'm going to run after you. Because I want everything you have for me. Today I'm making a declaration. That I'm no longer going to be stagnant. I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to negotiate with you no more. I'm not going to try to say, well, Lord, okay, if I do it this way and then I'll do it that way. And after I fix this and after I fix that, because I can't fix it. But today, I'm coming to you because I desire all that you have for me. And I'm not going to let nothing, nothing stand in the way anymore. Nothing. If I could drag my sick body up here, I'm dragging my sick body.
sick body. If I got to press through, I'm pressing through. Because you don't take a vacation on me. So no longer am I going to put myself and my excuses before you. That's me. That's what Joel is saying. I'm saying that. I might not be down there, but I'm even saying that, Lord, no excuses. I want all of you. If that's you today, come and let me pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Era sundu robo kora sandia. Era basandu ro sondu ro hikeras yandere basu.